Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine Effects YouTube channel. So today we're doing this foil peeling effect using particle binds which actually stretch the cloth and then break if they're stretched too much. I would like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this video and let's jump right into it. So first just go under create and make a regular plane and let's make it 200 by 150 centimeters with 150 by 100 segments so something pretty detailed like this that's what we need for the cloth and then just hit w to move and then hold shift and drag to make a copy and then go under modifiers you can just type sh to find the shell modifier raise this up quite a bit so you want to leave a bit of a gap between the foil and the object that you're peeling it from so raise this up just a little bit more this is good and just right click and say collapse all, yes. Right click again, make it an editable poly. And then you can do Alt Q to isolate selection. And we just need to assign a separate material ID to the top polygons. So I'll just select polygons here. Alt W to go into your front viewport. And you can just select everything and then hold Alt and deselect everything but the top polygons right so you should end up with something that looks like this and just assign a material id 5 to those top polygons and you'll understand why in a second so i'll just escape isolation mode and then you just need some kind of a peeling object so i'll make a sphere enable auto grid make a sphere right here and you can rotate it so that it's like facing diagonally from corner to corner and you just want to enable auto key and then you can go to frame let's say 20 and first you just want to raise it up i found maybe move it forward a little bit and then maybe go to like frame 120 and move it up here and then you can go to frame 300 and move it all the way back here maybe something like this and to smooth out the path you can just select the first three keyframes click on this open mini curve editor and set it to auto which means smooth so now you have this nice sort of appealing motion so i just wanted to show you how i did that initial setup i'll just switch back to my original here which is exactly the same so let me delete this so let's make sure we disable auto key select the top plane and let's just name it our foil plane and this bottom box can just be called box 01 right so make a tie flow and first we're gonna worry about just the box so you can select the plane height selection and we just need to do birth position object pick our box 01 and i want to say density by material and set the id to 5 and you need to give birth to a lot of particles so that there's one particle on every vertex. So actually I'll set the start and end to zero and the total to 25,000 particles. The display can be set to large dots and make them yellow so you can see them. So now they're spread randomly but I want them to be on each vertex. So again under position object, location, say vertex in order. So right now these particles are not actually stuck to the box. So we need to add an object bind and again pick our box 01 and we need to say lock it to the surface of the box. And we can actually rename this Typeflow event as our box 01. So now let's take care of the plane. So I'll just unhide by name, unhide my foil plane. So let's do birth objects here and rename this event our foil plane pick the plane so now it's a tie flow particle we need to turn it into a cloth so cloth bind for the binding stiffness i want to do stretch one shear one so remember the higher this value the stiffer the bindings are so if you want it to stretch less you increase this number if you want the cloth to be able to stretch more you decrease this number. I found that already it was stretching a lot. So that's why I went with the highest possible 
stiffness for the binds. Now let's enable the CUDA cloth collision solver, but I'll actually just set the thickness to zero, friction to zero, enable self collisions and enable self thickness. And because right now it's just a perfectly flat plane, I wanna add some thickness to the foil as well. So I'll just say add shell to surface, inner amount to zero and the outer amount to 0.05. So right now um, the foil does have just a tiny bit of thickness to it as it should. Now we need to add some gravity, of course. So I'll just do force and set this to minus 0 0.1. Now, before we run any of the cloth simulations, it's a good idea to save your work always, right? So our cloth is being affected by gravity, but it is not colliding with the box 01. So we need to add a collision operator. Again, pick our box 01 as the collider. I want to give it a collision radius of 0.5 centimeters just so that there's a little gap and no intersections between the cloth and the object. And let's just make sure that bounce is zero, friction is zero, and variation is zero. So this will just ensure that the top layer of the foil is just nicely calmly sitting on top of the box. It's not moving, jittering, or anything. Right, so if I go forward now, you can see that the cloth is just sitting on top of the box. So now we need to bind it to the sphere so that it is actually peeled away. So we're gonna need a surface test. Pick the sphere for the surface test. And let's just say that if the cloth is within, say, three centimeters to the sphere, then I wanna bind it to the sphere. So I'll do another object bind, pick the sphere, lock the surface, connect it to the surface test. You can see the particles changed color because they are within three centimeters to the sphere. And now if I go forward, you can see that everything is working and the cloth is being sort of moved away, but it's not peeling, right? There's no tension between the cloth and the object. Now also what I noticed is that my yellow particles are not going all the way to the edge. And that's because I actually originally had one extra edge in here, I realized. So what you need to do is just select the box, go to edge, select any edge like this, and then select ring, and then click on connect. And just, you can drag and just make an extra edge loop close to the edge like this. And then you can go back under polygon, right? We only have the top layer polygon selected, so just click grow once. It'll select the edge loop as well and make sure that you set all of that to ID5. Exit out of isolation mode. And so now everything updated and we have the yellow particles going all the way to the edge. And we need to create some binds between the yellow and the red particles. So I'll just add a particle bind operator and put it right under cloth bind. And you can click on show bindings. And you can see we have beautifully bindings created between them. So I'll make them breakable with a stretch of 15%. That's the number that worked for me. Basically, if you wanted the foil to peel away easier, you can just lower the stretch number. If you wanted it to stretch even more before the binds break, you can increase this number. So I'll just increase the maximum binds to something like 500. All right, so everything is working except for these few initial particles that are attached to the sphere. They go into this event and they don't break. So what we need to do is just add a particle break operator and set it to all. So all of these binds are immediately broken as you can see right at the beginning of the simulation. So we don't have that issue anymore. You can see that everything is working and these binds are beautifully breaking as they're being sort of torn away. Now, I think that they could be a bit stiffer. So on the particle bind, you can just set the stiffness to one. And also let's add a slow operator to the cloth because the cloth is still wobbling and moving a bit too much. A slow operator, put it here and set it to something high like 80%. And at this point, I also wanna increase my simulation accuracy even more. So for the time step, I'll actually do one eighth frame. All right, this is working beautifully and we have our foil being peeled away. 
Now you can hit F4 to hide etched faces and you can turn off the display for all these particles so you can see just the cloth. Now what we can do to smooth this out is just add a tie relax operator. So you can see what that's doing, right? We have some of these sharp polygons. If I turn it on, they get smoothed out. You can set the amount to one and then we can also turbo smooth it. So let's add a turbo smooth operator, set it to two iterations and you have some nice cloth being peeled away with some nice wrinkly detail. So that's exactly how I got this look here. So let me just unhide my lights. And this is the material that I used for the foil. It's basically just gray for diffuse, white reflection, and then almost pure white refraction. You wanna give it just a little bit of grayness and that will make the foil not completely transparent. And so I'll just apply this material straight to tie flow. And if I enable my frame buffer, you should end up with something that looks like this. So the gap between the foil and the object is still a bit too much. So what you can do is just export the cloth into tie cache. So you would just add export particles set the output folder for your tie cache, set the output range and just generate tie cache. And then you can like disable tie flow and you can basically just raise this box higher to eliminate the, cap, the gap between the cloth and the box, right? So you get just a tiny little gap here. So I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, I'll be uploading more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.